Hi, folks, and welcome to the second or third day of uh, Virtual Cantech West. Quite a long, quite a long, long process here. Um, I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit more orientation information at the end of the session. But I would like to give you get give a virtual hand for uh, our uh, now virtual conference veteran, because uh, Meng Yun was uh, one of the presenters with, uh, last time when we hastily created our virtual conference and we've had a little bit more preparation time this time and uh, he's back with another fascinating talk so with that i'm just going to get out of the way and uh, let her tell us about her work Oh, also, I forgot to mention, she's got a co-speaker as well. It's, it's uh, welcome to all the folks on her team. So thank you very much. OK, let's get started. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so glad to see you guys again. Uh, my name is Meng Yun, and Dylan is my co-speaker at this time. Uh, come on, Dylan, say hello to everybody. Uh, okay, let's come back. Uh, today, we are going to talk about our recent research progress about artificial intelligence security. Uh, that is to discuss security problems of, of AI, and the title of this topic is The Risk of AI Abuse. Be careful with your words. Uh, before I start it, I want to introduce our first. We are from Tencent Jutra Lab of Tencent Security Platform Department. And Tencent Security Department has been with Tencent for 16 years and dedicated to the protection of QQ, WeChat, Tencent Games, and other critical products. Our interests include Tencent account security, AI security, anti-fraud, anti-scapping, and and ensuring detection, mobile app security, uh, and the like. Uh, we build Tencent TMU system to prevent network intrusion and horrors, a system to hunting miniature packages against Python, Ruby, and uh, Node.js. Uh, Tencent Jutra Lab was founded in 2019 by Tencent Security Forum Department, focusing on red teaming and AI security research. Okay, let's come back to the topic. Uh, in this talk, we want to discuss existing challenges of AI at first, including vulnerabilities, new attacks, and some other things. And then let's think about a question. If we use AI in a bad way, what will happen? With this question, we will show an attack about how to make a fake core based on AI technologies. After that, we will introduce how to defend such attack as well. Uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, we, we are willing to share two, uh, two little stories about how to use AI to try some good things. Uh, I think everyone here has heard how incredible, powerful, and successful AI is. Many different tasks that could not be solved with software before are now solvable thanks to deep learning and neural networks and gradient descent. All of those technologies that are working really well and we call them AI. Absolutely, the time has come for AI. This is possible because several developments are currently co coinciding. First, the computer power of computer pro uh, pro processors has increased rapidly. Second, huge amounts of data are available today from the cloud and high mobile bandwidth. This is important because AI systems are particularly useful when it comes identifying patterns in a large amount of data. Besides, software developers are now able to write programs that work in a similar way to the human brains. Uh, AI has long since found its way into, for example, 56% of Germans 
already used assistants such as uh, Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri. Smartphones are able to recognize bad foods or in a car. And uh, thanks to the AI algorithms, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, the like offers us exactly the information that interests us. So how to build an AI system? You know, before being used, an AI system will go through many process. Typically, if an AI engineer starts to develop an AI system, the, the first step is to collect the data. For different application scenarios, there will be different data types, such as images, videos, and the like. Data preparation is typically important because it significantly de determines the robustness of the AI model. So in this process, engineers must be careful to uh, check the data and select the bad one. After that, AI engineers use those data at work and uh, then evaluate the quality of the trained model. Uh, that is to use the data out of the train set to test uh, the recall processing or some other evaluation criteria of the model. Uh, once, the radio, uh, once the radio is satisfied the requirement, the model will be deployed. The most common way is to deploy the AI model as a cloud service. It provides users with an uh, inference API, which takes the user's data in and uh, outputs the prediction result of the AI model, just like a black box. Uh, however, each process of de deploying, deploying uh, developing an AI system may attack by attackers. Uh, generally, AI systems face multi-challenge components of AI systems may contain vulnerabilities. AI systems usually contain many, many deep learning, the floor, cafe, prior torch, and so on. The, Acceleration frameworks such as TensorRT. So, you know, most of the AI algorithms written by Python and use a lot of Python packages such as OpenCV, NumPy, Pandas, and so on. Of those components, may contain vulnerabilities. And the bug hunters had found 37 vulnerabilities of TensorFlow, for example. Once those probabilities are adopted by the attackers, the AI systems will be vulnerable to be attacked. Challenge two. Uh, in fact, there have emerged a lot of new attacks on AI systems. Uh, you know, data agreement significant compromise, but unfortunately, to be vulnerable. Uh, first, the data used for training AI models may be attacked by data poisoning attack. Uh, in most cases, a large amount of data is typically required. AI engineers cannot check each data during the data preparation. A, a, a opportunity to modify the uh, part of the make the train the model with a hidden backdoor. Uh, when the, uh, but the backdoor puts a not, but when it takes a special modified data in, it will output a certain incorrect result. An adversarial example is an adversary apply some small perturbations on making the prediction of the neural networks change to another label. And for most cases, such modifications on images or on other types of the input new slide. In fact, I have given a talk about this program since 2019. Besides, 
as you know, uh, backlogs of AI service are available on the cloud. We send the data in it outputs a prediction result. Uh, for example, image classification. We send an image to query the AI service. So attackers can utilize the outputs of the multiple queries as a target loss to retrain a new model. That is similar to one provided by the AI service and achieve the purpose of model stealing. Challenge three, the risk of AI abuse. Let's think about that. Uh, what will happen when we use AI in a wrong way? It uh, may be a weapon of the underground industry. For example, capture is an effective mechanism for protecting computers from malicious both with the development of AI technologies. Current captures have been to prove to be in cycle, include uh, mainstream text-based captures, image-based captures, and some other newly Im imaged visual-based captures. Uh, the underground industry also followed a set of art research results and used AI as a tool to recognize cap captures for go profit. Uh, besides, uh, I have present a talk about the attack and defenses about the fake in Cancer Investor 2020. The defake is an AI-based technology used to one space to another one and uh, produce all also brings security risks, risks uh, as well as cases by passing faith. A photo of a target person, the underground industry uses the fake to swap the target face. feeling um some uh, some stuff going some uh hiccups here we're still getting learning how to use this uh, new platform in many ways actually um so let's uh re restart this and uh let me introduce uh, our uh, virtual veteran because this is her second virtual conference here at uh catsec west because meng Yung was presenting about uh, deepfake videos when we did our first uh, hybrid conference un unwittingly uh, planned uh, hastily under one week last March. So uh, please, uh, a big virtual hand for uh, Meng Ying Tang and her uh, co-speaker. And I'll uh, I'll apologize because I have to. I I'll let them introduce each themselves, and I'll get out of here and uh, let them uh, tell you about uh, deepfakes. Oh, there you go. Good. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's get that again. Uh, there may be some uh, mistake in last time. Uh, okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so glad to see you guys again at Classic West. Uh, my name is Mo Yin Tang, and Dylan is my co speaker at this time. Come on, Dylan. Hi, everyone. I'm Dylan. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, today we are going to talk about our current research progress about artificial intelligence security. Uh, that is to discuss some security problem of AI and uh, the title of this topic is the risk of AI abuse. Be careful with your words. Uh, Before I started, I then sent it to 3D modeling to create the facial actions required face and his moving. After that, they inject this fake video into the phone camera to bypass the face and his moving. Actually, AI is a double-edged sword. It makes our lives more convenient, but also some security programs. 
Okay, we have discussed the existing security programs of AI. The next, uh, we are willing to show a real-world attack case. Uh, we found that the most of the new attacks about AI security stop at academic research. As my, I mentioned before, data poisoning attack, which modifies a part of the training data to make the trained model with a backdoor. Uh, okay, let's rethink this scenario. There is no doubt that the first step to, of this attack is to get the data. So how to achieve that? I think maybe the traditional theory technology is all we need. So we think about two more questions. How to make a full chain attack based on AI technology? And what will happen when traditional attack technology is powered by AI technology. These are two questions we conduct a real-world attack about how to use a few pieces of somebody's voice records to imitate his or her words to make a fake call. Uh, this is a full-chain attack which combines traditional security technologies and uh, AI technology. Uh, as you can see, this figure shows an overview of our attack. Uh, as you know, VoIP phones can be easily decrypted and tapped by hackers due to the data encry encryption is weak. So in, they employed this vulnerability to conduct this attack. Uh, and the process only requires three steps. First, they monitor the line and temper the number and phone, uh, the name and the phone number by modifying the SSAP protocol packet so that the Cisco IP phone of the receiver is displayed as any content. Second, they snip the line and restore the call voice through an unpacking program. Uh, because the RTP protocol used by both parties in the uh, Cisco technologies to generate the voice of the corner to target the receiver. Uh, okay, next uh, let my co-speaker Dylan to introduce details about the VoIP attack. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi there, um, it's uh, Dylan speaking. Um, let's talk about uh, how AI is used in VoIP attack. At first, uh, let's introduce what is what is VoIP. VoIP is a shortened form of voice over internet protocol. It's a general terms for technologies used in IP-based networks for audio streaming. Is currently widely used in commercial systems such as Skype, Sparkle. It's a way to call a mobile phone on the internet. Even more generally speaking, IM software such as QQ, WhatsApp is also an implementation of VoIP. What's most important is how the interfaces use VoIP. The famous product like a Cisco IP phone is widely used by large-scale enterprises. In such scenario, the applications usually have a variety of protocol implementations, such as RTP, SIP, SCCP, MGCP, H.323, and so on. The variety of implementations usually means that great, the greater risks are exposed to attacker. From the perspective of CVE data, IP phone vulnerabilities are on the rise. More and more vulnerabilities are discovered, and the companies usually are difficult to find and to repair these vulnerabilities, which lead to increased risk in IP phone system. The security issues of IP phone system are usually ignored by companies, but the losses they caused are often critical. For example, in a report released by Checkpoint in 2020, 
it disclosed the, that the injector organization attacked more than 1,200 SIP servers in 20 countries around the world. The vulnerability is used to legal sell telephone communication service and uh, eavesdrop on leg legitimate call. It, this has caused the serious consequences. Uh, now I will introduce how to use deepfake audio in VoIP protocol attack. First, we hijack the traffic of ta target phone by LP spoofing. Store the voice stream from the call traffic to achieve eavesdropping. The audio, uh, the audio used as input of deepfake audio model. There, the AI model completes completes the voice conversation. We hijack the phone traffic again, and temper the caller's name and the phone number in the ICCP protocol. Where it is by the fact that. Uh, the protocol does not share whether this has been tampered with. Uh, figure shows the it was it was dropped in the RT stream. It contains audio stream on a legitimate call. Okay, my part is over. Let's uh, hand over stage to me. Okay, I'm come back. Uh, the another significant of this attack is how to generate the big words uh, and the videos words synthesized based on AI to achieve that. Uh, it's new and has been applied in many scenarios as voice assistant. Voice synthesis also have different types. Text-to-speech, TTS, is one of that. TTS system converts normal language text into speech. Uh, the for instance, is a classical TTS network, and it is a fully con it, it, it is a fully convolutional. Uh, Before we train the TTS model, we should report or and the works should be think after training the test and the generate the speech with corresponding. A trained model only can generate the voice of a single speaker, and the training takes that place. So, to generate fake voice use TTS in our attack is not uh, possible. The another voice synthesis is voice transfer, uh, that is, voice dependent to another one. As the figure shows, the words transfer is much more catted than TTS. From encoder, uh, uh, constant features conditioned on the speaker embedding, and the last is a vocoder that uh, is to synthesize speech from the male spectral group to train the to train the cross uh, to train the. Uh, uh, 
to a bar it's kind of funny because the second guy you think you would abduct is another method of birth synthesis which is very similar to the voice transfer uh, the major differences is the voice cloning takes a text and a speech of the speaker in and outputs the imitated speech with corresponding text content. So the architecture of the voice cloning model use, uses a text encoder to convert a character sequence into a hidden feature representation instead of the audio encoder in voice transfer. And uh, in this model, it only requires a, a few pieces of the voice records to generate the synthesized voice. Okay, let's review the differences between those three methods. Uh, the first is the TTS. It takes the text and the text in and outputs synthesized speech, which contains corresponding text content. And generally, uh, a, a trained TTS model can only generate the voice of a certain person, and dozens of the hours of the voice of the target person are recorded in the model. And uh, the second is voice transfer. It takes the speech of the target person and uh, the speech that needs to be transferred in and then outputs the transferred speech. Uh, different the GTS uh, trained the voice transfer model can generate the voice different uh, people. Uh, in most cases, I think the method is a little bit like Conan's ball. And the last one is voice cloning. It uh, takes the speech of the target person and uh, the text in, and then outputs the synthesized speech with corresponding text consent. And the voice of the generated uh, speech is much more similar to the, uh, the speech in. Uh, and uh, same with the voice transfer, a model, can, uh, a model of voice cloning can generate the voice of different people, and only a few seconds of the target voice records is required. Uh, so that in our tech, we use voice cloning to generate our uh, synthesize uh, to synthesize the fake voice. And by the way, our tech demo will be released online later. Actually, there have been several reported cases where synthesis voice audio has uh, uh, generally been used to defraud uh, companies. Uh, once such AI attack based. Uh, uh, attack is mastered by the underground industry. I think without no doubt that more fraud cases will be generated. Uh, and you know, it is quite easy for an attacker to achieve our voice clips. So everybody should be careful with his or her voice. Uh, and then they think about the question how to defend such attack. Uh, I think we could solve this problem from two aspects. Uh, the first, from the view of an AI engineer, uh, the solution is to use the AI to defend against the AI abuse. Uh, in fact, the tone, accent, accent, speaking speed and speed and emotion of a certain person is hard to imitate. Besides, in some cases, uh, the quality of those synthesized speech. Uh, is not uh, always good, so uh, and it may contain some noise. Uh, but uh, AI algorithms are good at capture, uh, capture, good at capturing features that uh, humans cannot notice. So we can use AI to determine a speech is real or fake. Uh, but challenge always exists. Uh, first. There are various voice synthesis algorithms and their variants. The more types of fake voice that need to be detect, detected, the harder it is for the AI model. Second, 
lack of training data is a significant challenge as well because the robustness of the AI model largely depend on the qualities of the data. And the last but not the least, the, in, uh, the transferability of the AI algorithm is also a big problem. Uh, in that case, a trained model usually performs good at fake voice it has seen, but cannot correctly detect unknown fake voice. So there is still a hard problem for both academy and industry. To determine a speech is fake or real, we build a deep neural network. Uh, it takes a speech in and then outputs the predicted result, real or fake. The artificial, uh, arti uh, the, arti the architecture of this model is simple, just uh, contains two modules, a feature extraction module to encode the input speech to an embedding feature and, and a classifier to determine whether the speech is fake or real according to the extracted feature. To train the module, we use the data set AS based proof 90, 90, uh, 2019. This is a large scale public data set of sensor sized uh, converted and uh, replayed uh, speech. And uh, finally, our model achieved a mean TDCF of 0 0.077. Um, but to be honest, uh, our method still has a long way to go. Uh, the first is to improve the robustness of the model in complex scenarios, such as those speech with noise or background music. The second is to solve the problem of transferability, as I mentioned before. Second, from the view of security engineer and stopping using IP phone that relies on vulnerability protocol uh, implementation, such as CP790 serials, and uh, install security patches as soon as is, uh, possible. Besides isolation and uh, security boundary protection to prevent sniffing and uh, screwing attacks. Uh, the meant strict identity authentication makes the MT, uh, MITM attack more difficult. At the end of this talk, I want to share two stories about AI for good. That is uh, how to use AI to do some meaningful things. Uh, as you know, snow leopard is a kind of real animals in China. Most of them in a uh, alpine terms. This makes it difficult for animal protection experts to achieve the uh, record, uh, achieve and record their living conditions. Therefore, we developed a lot of infrared cameras in the area uh, where they li live and use AI algorithms to analyzes the data captured from those cameras to detect, recognize, and track snow leopards and uh, to record their lives. This, uh, I think this is a good practice of using AI for wildlife conservation. And in China, the number of the visually inspired exists 17 million. To have the visual inspired, we developed a tool to remind them of things at front left, front right, and the front. This tool uses AI algorithms to recognize those obstacles and uh, give real-time feedback to the blind for potential obstacles. Uh, as an AI engineer, uh, we just want to use AI to make the world better. Uh, okay, uh, let me make a conclusion of this talk. Uh, AI is around us every day, but the security is still one of the biggest challenges in deploying AI systems. There are three most significant security challenges of AI. First, an AI system usually based on various fundamental components, and those components may contain vulnerabilities. Second, they have uh, they have 
imaged a lot of new attack on AI systems, such as data poisoning attacks, adversarial attacks, model stealing attacks, and so on. Said the risk of AI abuse, we have shown a tech an attack when traditional security technology is powered by AI and pointed out that what will happen if we use AI in a bad way. So what should we do? Uh, of course, the ultimate goal is to build a secure and trustworthy AI systems and to use technologies to avoid AI abuse, tech for good and AI for good. Okay, that was, thank you guys. And feel free to ask questions to this email and uh, especially thanks to Kusei Zenos and uh, Dragos. Thank you guys.